This outcrop represents a really important boundary within the Earth. Uh, this boundary was identified by geophysicists many decades ago, um, typically at a depth between 5 kilometers under the oceans and 40 to 70 kilometers, 30 to 70 kilometers under the continents. And it's a boundary where the velocity of seismic waves increases quite suddenly from less than 7 kilometers a second to over 8 kilometers a second. And that boundary was discovered by a geophysicist called Mohorovicic, but because the name is so difficult to pronounce, uh, it's commonly abbreviated to the MOHO. Now, for many years, the MOHO was kind of a theoretical concept. Nobody had ever seen it. Uh, it was known to be uh, the base of the crust. In fact, it was defined as forming the base of the crust. Um, but there are a few places in the world where slabs of oceanic lithosphere have been thrust up onto the continents. Those places or those rock suites are known as ophiolites, and sometimes they preserve within them the moho, the boundary between the crust and the mantle. So this is one such place. This is the Tablelands in Grossmore National Park in western Newfoundland. And I'm standing actually on a boundary between this grey rock here, which is a gabbro. Uh, it has lots of feldspar in it, which is weathering white on the surface. Um, and the rusty coloured rock underneath me uh, is peridotite. It has no feldspar. It's made of olivine and pyroxenes. And it happens that typical seismic velocities in gabbros will be less than 7 kilometres a second. Typical velocities in pure peridotites are over 8 kilometres a second. And so we think that this zone here that I'm standing in preserves the moho. So as you look to the west here, you can see that the landscape is mostly grey gabbro. And as you look to the east, you can see that the hills are mostly orange weathering through the tide. In between there is a zone maybe a hundred meters or two wide uh, where the two rock types alternate. I'm just standing on one of those boundaries. And so the Moho is actually a zone that's maybe a couple of hundred meters wide. And this is true of the Moho when we sense it geophysically underneath the oceanic crust as well. So this grey rock here is Gabbro. It's a feldspar bearing rock. It has some uh, olivine and peroxine in it. Um, and it contrasts with the rusty weathering rock down uh, below me here, which is Pritotype. So this is a boundary between feldspar bearing rocks and rocks without feldspar. Probably formed in a magma chamber at a spreading ridge underneath a mid-ocean ridge. Um, and the earliest crystals to settle on the bottom of the magma chamber were mostly um, olivine and peroxine, and then they made peridotite. We call these rocks cumulate peridotites. And then later on, the rest of the magma crystallized to form this gabbro here. So this is one of the few places uh, in the world where you can actually stand on the moho, a surface which is usually buried between 5 and 70 kilometers below the Earth's surface.